All right, we are live. Hey, everybody. My name is Via Williams with uh, Ben Kinney and the Keller Williams uh, brokerage is here in Western Washington. And I've got one of my amazing empire building co-hosts, uh, Seychelle Van Poole with me. Uh, every couple Fridays, two or three Fridays a month, uh, I do a one-on-one -on -one interview for our Ben Kinney Leadership Mentoring Group. And lately, I've been focusing on the Empire Builder co-host because, well, duh, we just launched our podcast. That's right. And, yeah. And so we've been um, uh, having a lot of fun putting these interviews on Facebook Live. And I also want you to know, we do Wednesday webinars every Wednesday, and we often do these Friday interviews, like I said, a couple times a month. Um, so you can always find us doing them just because... Um, Seychelles, the last Empire Building co-host, doesn't mean we're done with our Friday interviews. We really enjoy them. I've interviewed Chris Suarez, uh, Ben Kinney, Bowen Kimber, Kimber Mankiti, Sarah Reynolds, Wendy Papasan, and I've got a Brenda whole Wynn. bunch. Yeah. Brenda Wynn, a whole, thank you. A whole bunch lined up. So I just don't want you to think that we're going to stop, you know, just because... Um, just because we're kind of done with our four empire building co-hosts. So um, we would love to have you guys participate. Uh, Hattie's going to kind of monitor the Facebook live as well as the zoom window so that we can um, be sure that we answer your questions. Here's, here's what I'd, I'd like to do. I would just like to say, shall introduce you a little bit because um, sure. I think you're, you're just one of my favorite people. You're a very, very close friend. We spend a lot of time together. We've known each other for, for quite a while. Yeah. And you are one of the most caring, compassionate, sweet, smart, successful people I know. And, and you've managed to do that, you know, without this, this hard edge, you've managed to do that being kind and, and sensitive and, uh, you know, showing your emotion and a lot of people can't do both. Yeah. And I, I've been Thank through you. some, yeah, of course I, I've been through, you know, we've been through a couple things together that, you know, haven't always been unicorns and rainbows, right? Totally. Um, when I was first getting to know you, we spent the night in the ER together. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually our first bonding experience. That was it. I still have like a little bit of a scar right here that looks like a teardrop yeah. from that night. And yeah. I feel like it's like, a little, you know, like in gangs, yeah. like I think it means that's a sign of someone. something. I does, I think. Yeah. And so I feel a little gangster from that night still because I have this little bitty yeah. tiny teardrop scar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And and I think what's amazing is is when I started getting to know you, I just started really getting to know you as a person, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember one day, a true story, and we were both in Gary Keller's top agent group. So, I, you know, I knew that my friends were highly successful, but I'll admit, you know, I, I don't sit around and like look up my friends' numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one day, I'm like, oh my God, Seychelles has a $100 million business. <laughs> like, like my sweet little, you know, nicest friend in the world has a $100 million business. And, and I've just been blown away by that, that, you know, you are the whole package, right? That's really sweet. Well, and, and it I'm, depends on the day, how you feel, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing though, Seychelles. You know, I'm guessing that when you are in, in the package you're in, a lot of people might misunderstand you though. Yeah. And think that it is all unicorns and rainbows, right? Oh, for sure. I, yeah. I think, um, especially in a world where social media is so prevalent, um, I think a lot of people judge books by their covers, you know, whether, yeah. whether we want to admit it or not, I think that's become a societal thing. For sure. And, you know, and so I want to dig deep on that. And I want to actually with you talk about what do you do when the rug gets pulled out from underneath you? Okay. And, and what I think is especially, you know, um, timely about this is that everybody thinks we're going to talk about COVID, which we are, which we are. But we're going to, what I'd like to do, what I'd like to start off with is have you intro us going into kind of November, December of last year of 2019, mm -hmm. because we're filming this on June 19th, right? We're filming mm -hmm. this uh, on my son's birthday, June 19th. And, and so what I want to start with Seychelles is can you kind of walk us through what, you know, what your business looked like and you're riding high, you know, you have a big, huge real estate team in Dallas, Texas, and to kind of walk us through what it looked like until kind of Thanksgiving. -y. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, 
I feel incredibly fortunate because our business has largely been built off of providing excellent service. And with that, we have been fortunate enough to be in business with some really just amazing people. And because of that, um, really up until this last year, that has afforded us a reputation of if you're looking to be in real estate and you want to play on a team and grow with people and go far together, you go and join Van Pool. And, um, you know, our track record is like we have Marie, who's like our OG, if you will. We've been together 18 years. Chris and our lead admin, we've been together 14. Erica, our second lead admin, 11 years. You know, our CFO has been with us over 30 um, you know, we, our, our sales team has been with, us, been with us a really long time. So we have this like really tight, cohesive group. And then we selectively add in people, which is a really beautiful position to be in. And, um, we game planned our 2020 as I'm sure a lot of you guys did, um, in building your business, projecting off of your successes of 2019. And so we projected a 50% growth between last year to this year based on the team that we had in October. And we roll into November and um, our Austin expansion location, which is um, Gwen Harker Pool is her name. She's just, if you've ever had the chance to meet her, she's one of these humans that like you just want to be with for life. She's just an incredible human being. And her husband actually happened to be a really good buddy of mine. And we'd done um, several business opportunities and ventures together. And uh, his cancer came back over Thanksgiving. And, um, we, he went downhill really fast. And so being that we're based in Dallas, we started really pushing as a team to support him, whether it was dropping care packages off at the doorstep or sending attorneys to the hospital to write wills and redo estate planning and, um, you know, lining up hospice care. I mean, when some, when something happens where your spouse goes downhill really quickly, you become such a primary caregiver, you can't really think about the rest. And so for our team, and especially because they both are such good friends, we became like the high, the high on the disc, right? Infrastructure around her. And my team was laughing. They were like, you know, on the disc, you are an off the charts DI. IDDI, they can almost interchange each other because yeah. they're between 97, 98% between the two. And so I love in that same way where it's like, if you and we're in the hospital right now, I'd be like, I'm sending you cookies and an attorney <laughs> <laughs> to rewrite your will and cookies to make you feel better about Makes it. Makes perfect right? like, sense to me. Yeah. It's, it's a little love and a little, you know, mm -hmm. drive at the mm -hmm. same time. And so that's what we were doing is we were really, you know, being the, that Heidi compassion for her that she needed. And we were mm -hmm. lining up all the things. And um, we thought the doctor seemed to think he probably had maybe three months and within less than 30 days, um, he passed away. Yeah. And, and so he passed away on a uh, Christmas day, which was just really not fun and right before his birthday. And so we were dealing and grieving with that loss. And at the same time, one of our, our longtime team members, who is a great person, um, decided she wanted to kind of venture out on her own and start doing her own thing. And, and because we've had so little turnover in our business, you know, it was like, we do going away party. We kind of plan sort of just an easy lackadaisical offboarding because it doesn't really happen that often. And I always mm -hmm. believe you want to treat people the way you would want to be treated. So, you know, we just sort of like easily offboard. And then we go, uh, my friend Dean passes away on Christmas day. We go up with my in-laws to the Northern uh, hinters of Northern Michigan at Boyne Mountain. And we spend through New Year's there. And then I get back on that Thursday after New Year's Eve. So that would be the, mid we got back at like 1230 that night on, so the morning of the third. And I get a call from my director of sales. It's like, hey, can we meet up today? It's Friday. She knows I'm going down to give the eulogy that weekend in Austin. And I was like, yeah, sure. Totally. Um, so we get together and that Friday then I learned that she and one of my other team members is exiting the team. Um, and we decided not to say anything yet because I was an emotional mess and trying to write a eulogy because we literally got home Thursday, you know, Friday morning at 1230 a.m., that happens. I'm now trying to write a eulogy and then we leave to go give the eulogy. I drive down and back in the day on Sunday. Um, Monday after that, I find out we have um, two other team members that were planning on exiting that we didn't know about that were also 
figured out that next day. So in a matter of four days, basically the bulk of my sales team turned over and I got to give a eulogy. And, and you know, I've been there. I mean, Ooh, you, like I, so, I still have that like pit in my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> Even talking about it, like, ugh, it's really was, hard. And I remember, terrible. I remember editing the eulogy with you. I remember yeah. talking with you. Through, funny enough, we're 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 filming this on my son number two's birthday. January fourth is son number one's birthday. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I just remember, I just remember those days. Mm-hmm. You were, um, you were. It was a devastating time. I think oh, that, that was not was, an understatement. It was devastating. Yeah. And so then, so then I get back on Sunday, Monday. We find out about like kind of everything else hitting the fan. And, and Tuesday is our team meeting, right? Where we have our team meeting and I can't walk into that not telling everyone. Yeah. So now I'm having to call Monday night with all of the team. So like now you're having the meetings before the meetings. I'm having to have all the meetings before, before the, the meeting. meeting. So that whole night I'm having to call every single team member, which I'm still an, an emotional mess from the eulogy, much less like all of the other stuff going on. And so now I'm having to call every team member let them know what's going on. and. I remember driving in because Tuesday morning is our team meeting and I can't, I can't walk in and blindside them all at once. And so I'm, you know, I'm in the car, traffic was unusually bad. So I got extra time to sit and think and I'm, you know, sitting in the car now for an hour on the way into the office because there were wrecks everywhere. And I'm just thinking about like, how, how do you do this? How do you, how do you as a team that has very little turnover go through a lot of turnover and a lot of loss, honestly, right? Mm-hmm. And a matter of, you know, yeah. four days. Oh, I've been there. I get it. And um, I called um, our friend Wendy Papazan because she had gone through this mm-hmm. the previous mm-hmm. year. And funny enough, our teams mirror each other in a lot of ways. Yeah. And I teased with her. I said, this was not really one of the ways in which I was wanting to mirror you. Um, on how we do this. So please don't take it the wrong way that I didn't want to follow you into this, but here we are. And, and um, I really appreciated her candor and transparency because I, I think had I not talked to her, I would have walked in with my battle armor on and just kind of held out the sword and said, hey, this is, this is what has happened and this is what we're going to do and we're going to charge forward and it's going to be okay. And the advice she gave to me first was like, we are a family run business and we are fortunate enough to be really close. And so anytime I think you go through what I would consider to be a loss of that magnitude, you have to take some time and be able to come together and to have a safe space and to grieve and to be able to, to work through that. And um, something I learned in my late teens when my dad was diagnosed with Parkinson's was he couldn't really control the disease of Parkinson's, right? He couldn't control that that diagnosis now was a part of him. Um, But after about six months of depression, really, really, I think the whole family actually was pretty depressed. Um, He he woke up one morning and just said, you know, I, I can't control the diagnosis, but I can control what I do about it. And I can control the attitude that I keep. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I've always really kept at the center when there's stress is okay, there's a swarm of emotion, there's a swarm of out of control that's occurring. And in this case, it felt very out of control. Um, And at the same time, I can only control my attitude and I can only control the steps I move forward with. I can't go change anything behind me at this point, right? But I can only change what I learn, the attitude, the actions, what we do, how we react, right? We can change all of those things. And so um, that's what we did at that first team meeting on that Tuesday. So let's, let's, let's just stay on that a minute, Seychelle, yeah. because having, having gone through this before, so I, I think it's an important point to stay on yeah. because I know a lot of people would say to not do that. Uh, totally. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. I know there's a lot of really great leaders who would actually say, no, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't have the whole organization, the whole team, the whole company, the whole division, whoever you are, don't have them sit around and talk about a loss. We don't do that. That's not good. Right. And, and the when reason I, and I, want to be that clear, is that I didn't do it. Well, you, and you don't sit around and you don't gossip. You sit around and you're allowed to acknowledge the grief and the loss. I think those are two different things, right? So I just want to make sure I'm clear. It wasn't that we sat around and were gossiping about what was going on, but I think you have to acknowledge that if there is a loss, you have to acknowledge that there is a void that people are feeling and they may have emotions around that. And we need to acknowledge that before I think we can then say, okay, now what? 
and you actually were a part of the now what? Yeah. And, and yeah. And, and the reason I, I think it's such an important point is that I didn't do that. And so mm. what happens when you don't do it as a leader in the absence of leadership, you guys, they will find a leader. So yeah. people will find leadership. So what happened, I learned later is that factions started forming. And so what, yes. what happened is I wasn't there to facilitate the, the grief, so to speak, or the, right. the change right. and the transition. And then, and then what was happening is that they were gravitating towards other leaders on the team who were stepping up to facilitate that conversation. Right. And then my team fell apart. I mean, there's a whole mm -hmm. bunch of reasons it fell apart, but I just, I really, I completely changed how I lead after mm -hmm. what happened to me. And, and one of the ways I changed it, say, was, was I just became super transparent Right. And I did provide a safe space to start talking about all of that. So I just wanted to, you know, point that out. I think that's really great leadership that you did. Well, thank you. It was really uncomfortable leadership. And um, something that Wendy told me is to the reason why she wished she had done that in the first place. So she said, you know, when you put on your battle armor after a loss and you walk in and you're beating the drums and you've got your sword out and your armor on, what you're saying to people is it's fine. I'm fine right? And you and I yeah. tease about that phrase a lot. Yeah. Like we, yeah. we, at the whole time mentally, you, you know, several of us in the, our little private chat group were like, I'm fine. fine. It's fine. This is fine. fine. <laughs> totally but fine. This is great. <laughs> it's so great right now. But you know what I think, um, what I think if you do that to your team, what it does is it tells them that you're fine without them too. That's right. Shows them you don't care. It shows them you don't care, even though you yeah. probably really do. I would yeah, argue that right. most people don't go into leadership or become entrepreneurs or build a business without having a tremendous amount of care and how you react in stressful situations sh shows them a lot about where you are in your leadership journey. And so we had yeah. radical transparency. And I think, I think anytime there's a big change like that, the first thing you have to learn is you have to own your failures in that part too. Because there, you don't go through something like that and it be all somebody else's fault. That's you just right. don't. And so as a leader, the first thing I started off that meeting with was, here's what, you know, obviously you guys all know now, you know, here's what's going on. And here, uh, upon having radical reflection time over the last four days, here are some of the things where I feel like I have failed you guys. And here are the things that I have to commit to to get better at and that I have learned from and that I am personally going to change and that I commit to you guys to do to move this needle forward. Now, what are we all going to, you know, what is everybody else going to do too? How did your team take that, Seychelle? Um, I think they appreciated the responsibility. I think, you know... Uh, and that was something um, Barbara, my mom, was always so good at was anytime something bad happened, she would always say, well, what part did you play in that? Or what did so you, you learn? you modeled that behavior. And I modeled that behavior. Yeah. I mean, anytime anything bad happened, victim mentality was not allowed in our household. And so I, I have as an adult really taken that to heart too. And it's something I really work in my parenting with Quinn to model too. I think it's easy to have something else be somebody else's fault and you don't have to look internally but that was not something that was ever allowed as a kid. So that was a natural modeling for me to take responsibility first on my side. Now, yes, other people may have made decisions too. And you know what? They're all great humans and mm -hmm. they all are absolutely entitled to live their best life. And I, I, I want them to find happiness and chase their joy. I have like no problem yeah, with that I get at that. all. I get um, that. And it can still sting. Um, and so, you know, I took my responsibility first and I basically described our our word for the year was strengths. And what we talked about at our business planning last year was a boat. And in a rowboat, I'd been reading um, The Boys in the Boat yeah. from the 1930s. Based in Olympics, Seattle. Right? Yes, well, based in Seattle. Yeah. Well, yeah, University U of W, yeah. yeah, University of Washington. And um, by the way, it's a really long technical book about rowing. Um, and if you're from Texas without any lakes to go row on, it's a very long book about rowing. Um, but it's an amazing book. And what I so appreciated about it was how all of the different roles on a rowing team are equally important and vital to the success of the mission and the success, right, of, of the uh, regatta. Huh. Mm. 
There we go. Learning my rowing here. <laughs> um, so, you know, if you're looking at it, you have the coxswain and then you have all the different rowers, right? And, and some have the brawn, some are lighter, some, you know, keep the tempo, others bring the muscle, somebody helps the pace, right? The coxswain keeps the pace and the competitiveness and knows when to push and drive and when not to. And so we had talked about all of our rows in the, in the boat, right? All of our roles being so important. And so it actually felt really natural that that was a conversation we were having coming into this conversation because what happened was some people jumped out of the boat, all the oars got thrown up in the air and everybody had to catch one. And before that meeting, the conversation I had to have with every team member was, I, I care about you, I love you, and I want you in the boat, but I can't have you show up on Tuesday morning like one leg in the boat, one leg out. You have to either be all in or all out. I am completely cool either way you want to go. But if we show up on Tuesday morning and you're physically there, we are there and we are going. And we're gonna Did anyone one. not come? Did uh, anyone not want I to had come back? one. I had one almost not come. Okay. Are they still one with you? Not. Nope. That's yeah. the only one. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Everybody else is. And, and it's okay. That's totally okay. Does it make you wonder, Seychelle, does it make you think, should we be asking that question more often when there's not a crisis? You know, I think, um, I think that's something as a leader, we should be um, reevaluating weekly, not whether you want somebody on or off the team on a weekly basis, but am I showing up wanting to be here, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and are my actions, are my, is my attitude, is my energy showing up every week? Am I, am I literally pulling my part in the boat every week? I don't know. It's, yeah, it's an interesting concept because, you know, we all have good weeks and bad weeks, right? And we all have weeks where we do want to quit, but ultimately we don't really want to quit. Well, and that's, and when you look at the Olympic story, like if you guys haven't read this book, it's amazing. But one of the guys literally in the middle of the Olympic race, like basically blacks out. He's so sick. Oh. And like, he's literally like unconsciously, like his oar is in the water, but I mean, his eyes have rolled back in the back of his head. I mean, he's that sick. Wow. It's incredible. Um, you know, and you, you think about it. that, it's a good, it's a really good book. Yeah. Like there's a lot of technical rowing, but the, the meat of it's good. <laughs> and, you know, I think about that though, because there are days we don't want to show up. I'm sure there are days you don't want to, there are days that yeah, of course. Tuesday, I did not want to be there. <laughs> of course. Um, but we make a conscious choice. And, and I, the thing I love about our team and I still love about our team is we win and we lose together. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about it. So, so I love the lead up to this. So, you know, here we are, you enter the year thinking you're going to do a swan dive and it is a belly flop by January yes! 15th, right? I, not even like is. the fifth yeah. freaking day, yeah, man. Like I didn't so, even make it to the 15th. We didn't even And by the, the way, little protocol. did we know what was coming in March. That's, that's, you that's gotta be kidding me. Yeah. Like that well, doesn't even count cool, COVID. What was cool is so like we'd throw all the oars up, right? Everybody caught one and I, what blew me away was that, um, it cre the, the, the movement that happened in the team created opportunity, Ooh. right? And by somebody saying no to something or that they were opting out of an opportunity, it actually created momentum and opportunity for other people to step in. Hmm. And, and we saw that. We saw as others were leaning out and jumping out of the boat, others were leaning in, grabbing the oar and set in tempo and rowing and their attitudes were there and their energy was there. And they may have been people that were held back from opportunity in the past that all of a sudden realizing where that moment to shine was and we're leaning in and it was incredible to watch. And so, you know, we regroup, um, we completely flip the business around. We're moving fast because success is not an option. We will succeed. Yep. Right. Yep. And so, um, you know, we, we went from swan diving, which you've heard me say that analogy before standing on the high dive, yep. right? I'm like ready to swan dive in. And, this happens and then COVID hits right after that. And it's like having this huge COVID bully just like shove you off the high dive, right? And you're now in free fall trying to figure out your business. And the, the cool part was we'd already thrown the oars up once. And so we just, like the team actually was almost flawless with it. I was so blown away and proud of them because all of a sudden you saw the entire team throwing oars up in the air again, going, well, we've already done this once. Why can't we do this again? Let's figure it out. Let's do it. Let's rework it. Let's reinvent. And so the speed of which they caught tempo actually almost was to our benefit because we'd already had to do it 45 days before. 
Um, and so it was a really um, unique, unexpected gift that COVID happened twice, you know, almost COVID almost happened twice to us, right? Like, yeah, well, and that's, so even before COVID, I mean, just kind of going back to that meeting that Tuesday, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What did the turnaround look like? What, what Did you have a process or a framework for that turnaround? What did that look like? Um, well, I think, I think the first thing was we reassessed everybody's goals. The second one was to rally experts around us that could succeed at the roles other people may have been really great at that we knew we might be missing um, strengths in since that was our work. So did you, did you reassess your company goals at all or did you say those are, those are fixed? Did you change them at all? Um, at that point, we did not change the goals. Okay. So you kept your company goals and then we what you said is, goals. okay, we had all these people leave and now we have holes to fill. Yes. Okay. We have holes to fill. We have opportunities to fill. And I think at that point, um, if I'm going to be like super transparent, it was like, just please don't let the team die. <laughs> like, <it's> yeah, like, <laughs> of course. you know, it was, it was less about the, the team goal at that point. It was all about the individuals. Mm -hmm. Um, and the team became the collection of the individuals. Yeah, you pour um, into your key people at those times yeah. for sure. Yeah, and that's really where the, the focus went first. Um, and then, you know, th I think the third part about that then was bringing in subject matter experts to help. Like you came in and helped us with mindset and mm -hmm. base camps. And um, we hired an amazing pipeline coach to help us with something our director of sales was amazing at. Um, and, you know, we really just started looking at where are the strengths that we're missing now in the organization and who can help us do that at a high level where I'm not mm -hmm. having myself and our, our leadership team are not having to learn specific skill sets all at once um, to try to replace roles where somebody might've been really great. So we worked really hard to replace those. Well, and what's amazing is, you know, if you fast forward and we'll go back, cause I do want to talk about enter sure. COVID stage left, but, but what's cool about it is we, we've just spent the morning together. And so we were talking about how you've replaced some key, you know, management things that you needed mm -hmm. at like 20% of the cost yeah. using freelancers coming yeah. in, right? Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, and, and finding, like, I, I have always believed I want somebody doing what they easily and effortlessly gravitate towards. Mm. That for me is That's huge. Good, say that again. That's good. I want you to do what you easily and effortlessly gravitate towards. And I want you to do that again and again and again and again. And if you don't, that is okay, but let's not make that your full-time job. So that is a really good lesson for anybody listening right now. When you're looking at hiring people and maybe starting a team or, or growing your business, right? And mm -hmm. you look at how, how to hire around yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't stress enough what Seychelle just said is so important is ask yourself, what can I do easily and effortless, effortlessly and don't necessarily pawn that off, pawn right. the stuff that's hard for you. Right. And so, you know, some leaders are amazing at, pipeline management and forecasting. I can do the strategic, um, like deep thinking behind that, but the weekly pipeline management is really difficult for me. It's not something that brings me a ton of joy. It's not something I do naturally really well. I'm not good at it either. I'm not. I wish I were. My I, team I, leaders will tell you I'm just not good at right. it. Yeah. And I, de I deeply admire people that are because it's just not one of my gifts. And that was something that our director of sales was really great at. And so I knew immediately that was going to be a void that was going to be felt and felt really fast if we didn't get our arms around that. And so I talked to my coach and I said, who do you know that easily and effortlessly loves pipeline management? Loves it. Like wakes up every morning and is like, I love pipelines. I love coaching to pipelines. There I are love people helping the people that. to build that. <laughs> yes. I know. Crazy. It's amazing. And so we hired an incredible pipeline coach. And, you know, the team like loves him. His name's Fritz. They love Fritz. Every Friday morning, we spend an hour with him and they like, he is able to put momentum and focus and energy into that area of the business far better than I ever could learn to do quickly. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if I focus on it for the next three years, I could get decent at it, but it's still yeah. not going to be what somebody else naturally loves to do. So we, we really just started focusing in on the team that we had in place, which are awesome human beings, and then the subject matter experts we could bring in to replace the areas and holes we were missing. 
you know, we were able to completely reinvent both our P&L, but also the way that our business looks. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's been awesome. It's been By really the way, when, when you told Sarah Reynolds and I that this morning, we were both like, text us that number immediately. We were like <laughs> geeking out that there's, you can hire someone yes. to train your sales team on pipeline management. Yes. We were like, ah! Yeah. And, and like, do it in a fun, non like dreaded yeah, way. That's Cause that's how I always felt about pipeline. I was like, Oh, that's, that's not crazy fun to for me. me. Yeah, he's great. I, I get my team leaders on, on coaching now and I'm like, pull up your brevity. We're going <laughs> to, what are your A1, A2, A3? Like, it's just not, right. I'm just not naturally good at that. At all. Right. And so I, I knew that that was an area, like I started making the list immediately after that, like, where am I going to fail? Where, mm-hmm. where are our holes? Where are we going to fail? And if we don't get these pieces into place, it's going to be really tough. And that was one of them. And the other one was that weekly coaching and accountability and leaning in. And so we had one of our team members that's incredible, right? And is already a MAPS coach, lean in with us um, on that coaching side of things to really help move the needle forward with people. And she's just deeply empathetic, deeply intuitive, understands the business better than anybody and has been able to help be that additional voice of leadership with our awesome team. And so that I can focus on growth. I can focus on forecasting. I can focus on strategy, on building and hiring and all of these other things. Well, what I'm hearing is, is you did triage. So what I'm hearing is mm-hmm. you took the, some thinking time out and, and you really thought about, you know, what are the orders of priority? That's right. And, you know, the analogy, you know, this, that I right. always give, I've done it on our podcast is when the right. house is burning down, we, right. we don't really think about how to remodel the kitchen. Yeah. What we, what we do is we focus on, you know, how can we save the house? What's mm-hmm. first is just mm-hmm. emergency mode. Mm-hmm. And that's what you did. You just went into triage and you started ranking everything mm-hmm. and you started just, you know, focusing on your people and, and mm-hmm. tackling it one by one. And I think that's a gift, um, having dealt with, you know, family members with, um, pre-existing conditions or degenerative diseases, right there, we've been through a several market ups and downs, but B also some really crazy health crises, um, even though I'm in my, you know, mid to late thirties, we've been, I've seen more than my fair share (laughs) in the last 20 years. And, um, it's a huge gift because I think when crisis hits, I don't freeze. It's, I mean, the, the, the moment to activity is like seconds after that. It's a great trait. Yeah. There's no freezing and it's, it's because I've been thrown off the deep end more times without floaties than I can count that I, I haven't had to wonder if I can catch my breath or if I can move. I, I understand how to find oxygen, where to find the light, where to swim, where you got to go, how you get up to air. You know, you might still be two miles from shore, but I understand in the darkest of waters how to find light and get up to oxygen. And that's, that's something we've talked a lot about with our team when you're thrown off the deep end is what's the order of priority in which you have to figure out how to swim. Right. Yeah. I, I'm hearing a couple things. I'm hearing everyone here needs to throw their kids in a pool. Yeah. If they want to teach them how to bounce back. No, I'm kidding. That's right. <laughs> um, no, what I'm hearing is what, what you keep coming back to that I just want to point out is you keep bringing your team in. Mm-hmm. So you, you're talking to your team about it. You're being that transparent leader. Mm-hmm. They feel like they're, they're part of the collaboration. They feel like they're they part are, of absolutely. the solution, right? Absolutely. And I think that's where opportunity is for us all to grow. If somebody is growing privately, there's no room to learn from others. And I, I believe in learning from other people's failures and successes. Um, but I think mostly we really grow through failure. And if, if you're mm-hmm. not failing and rebounding quickly, then you're not growing. Mm-hmm. And we expect on our team that there is going to be some failure. We ex- expect more successes than failure, but we expect that there will be some failure and we're okay with that. Um, and as long as we're learning from it and growing and not making the mistake 20 times, right? You're learning and growing mm-hmm. and not repeating it over and over again. Well, then we move the ball forward That's right. and we push harder and we grow bigger. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it just, it, it, it's interesting because this year has been everything I thought it was not going to be. And it's also been some of the biggest growth, um, that I've experienced. I think that a lot of my team mm-hmm. has experienced that we never knew we needed. And that's a gift. A crisis reveals a lot about your company. It mm-hmm. reveals a lot about your team. And, mm-hmm. and I think it reveals a lot about you personally, you know, your leadership yeah. style. Yeah. Right. I also think, you know, a, a crisis um, usually reveals what we should have done before the crisis. 
Oh, 100%. And you know where a big fail that I had was? Is um, with my key leadership team, I got comfortable because we'd all been together for so yeah. long Makes sense. that I wasn't regularly checking in and pouring into them. I kind of put it on autopilot because I said, you've got this. Yep. I trust you. You're great. Yep. We're fine. And what they probably needed was somebody leaning in with them and helping to pull them you yep. know, out and grow them and push harder. And so mm-hmm. that was a, an immediate change that I made um, yep. and owned because that, yep. that was- 100% yeah. on me. And as leaders, we can't take the foot off the gas, that's right? right? We might be driving a different car that's pulling the rest of it instead of in, you know, in the truck mm-hmm. behind, but that's right. we don't, we don't get to take our foot off the gas and, and not pay attention and pour into our key leaders. And that definitely was an area that, um, looking back, I, I failed for sure my team on that. Oh, I've been Absolutely. there without it, question. Shame with me. Care and candor, and you cannot mm-hmm. have one without the other. It That's has right. to be both, right? That's right. Ben Ben Kinney always says, "Love and results. Care and candor, yeah. love and results. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, you can have love and you can have results. You need to have them both, right? You have to have both, exactly. Yeah. And that's and that that was a that was a big lesson for me on that I I let I let part of that slip, and and it revealed itself in a super painful lesson. Yeah which I don't intend to repeat. So yeah. follow my own, my own example well there. <laughs> so and that's so okay. I think, I think what, what's cool, Seychelle, is, you know, then we, you know, we go into our big annual Keller Williams, um, you know, annual event. We call it family reunion in, at the beginning of, of February. And we get a little distracted by that. I think what's interesting, because COVID hit, give or take, for Dallas at mid-March. Is that mm-hmm. about right? Mm-hmm. Mid-March, yeah. yeah. Mid-March, okay. So I think what, what's, what I'm hearing and that's fascinating that you could never have planned is that you almost entered COVID with a, a, more, a, a more collaborative, bonded, mm-hmm. strong, tight team mm-hmm. than you would have had your team not have kind of imploded. A hundred percent. And um, I forgot to tell you this, but this is also kind of humorous. Right after that Tuesday when we had to regroup as a team, I was on a regional panel that next day on Wednesday. And I I didn't look at the topics of it. You know, you just say yes and you figure it out later. So I said yes and I'm driving there and I look down at the topic and it's on the topic of the panel is um, retention and keeping your team. (laughs) I was like, awesome. Do you want to hear a story that I don't think I've ever told you? No, I want to hear about that. Okay. I'm going to tell you a story live on air that I have never confessed this to you. So you cried on that panel. I Not only did I cry, I like... Bald. Bald. So I got a text from Ben Kinney. Did you really? And he said, Via, you need to call Seychelle right now. I'm hearing she's breaking down. Mm-hmm. You need to call her. Have you talked to your I'm friend? Up right now. And he, um, and he, and he didn't. I called you and I texted you. Yeah. I was like, what's happening? I was I don't probably know. still on stage bawling. <laughs> yeah, it was right. It was, I was calling and texting. I was like, what's wrong with Seychelle? And then I found out later, that's what happened. We were, we, we have you, boo. We got you, boo. We were like all over that. He's like, you need to stop what you're doing and call and text Seychelle. Aw, tell Ben that's really I felt sweet. So, I was like, what's you. wrong? Oh, I was a hot mess. Well, and I didn't realize what the topic was until I was like standing there, like right, getting ready to go up. And I was like, oh no. It happens. <laughs> it happens. And then, you know. and then you feel like a total fraud, right? Too, because you're up mm-hmm. there like being asked on this topic that you're supposedly like, you know, and granted, we, we still have had people with us for a really <laughs> long time, you know, and I, I am eternally grateful for that. And we tease, we're all going to the old, old folks home together. We're just going to build one. It's going to be like the Van Poole Senior Living Center. And we're all just going to live there and it's going to be great. Um, but it's going to have a nice view. We're going to have that. Um, but <laughs> how did we get there? Uh, yeah. Rabbit hole. Re- okay. Let's get back. But yeah. anyways, okay, so yeah. yeah, so COVID happens and it really, it was, a, it, it, it couldn't have happened at a better time for us because we had already thrown all the oars up. We'd caught yeah. them all. We were rowing. It might've been at a slightly slower clip, clip than what we were doing coming in from the end of last year with everybody humming on all cylinders, but everybody was learning their new roles and digging in and, and, and together and positive and collaborating and asking questions and pushing forward and helping each other. And then to move from an in-person right collaboration to zoom, having that already started really helped us tremendously and gain yeah. momentum and even move it faster. And so then when we had to just completely reinvent the business for a second time this year, um, we, we at least already had the willingness. I didn't have any unwilling participants because everybody was already ready to go. 
So do you think you were quicker to pivot during COVID because you just, that muscle had been oh, exercised yeah. so much this year already? Oh yeah. I think that and the benefit that several of us had been through a downturn before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we shoot, we were part of the writing of the book shift, right? Like we'd already been there. Yep. And so we whipped that book back out. We had, you know, our list of all of our things that we had to do. And I mean, we, we started remargining our P and L um, the day shelter in place went in place here. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. and we cut 10% out of the um, overall total annual budget within um, 10 days. I mean, and then we cut 10 yeah. more percent. 10 days after that, we engaged the whole team. They all were involved in the PNL, which was something we yeah. hadn't done before um, that we are doing now. And, um, you know, we just always have the mindset of we preserve people first, mm -hmm. system second, mm -hmm. anything frivolous after that is gone. So yeah, that's right. that was how we did it. And it's, we have not let go of a single person on our end um, since then. So. I mean, that's fantastic. It, it, let me ask you this question, you know, between, between COVID, Seychelles and your entire team, you know, really mm -hmm. re, reinventing themselves. If we're sitting here a year from now and I'm interviewing you, which I hope I, hope I do. Um, so next, uh, next June, right? Mm -hmm. 2021. Mm -hmm. um, if we're celebrating a great year from here to then, how would you define that? What did you achieve? Uh, we've achieved a couple things. Um, last year was the best year we'd ever had in business. And our newly reformed COVID team has beat that. Oh, that's incredible. Um, and wow. I'm going to feel really good that we've done that. Um, the second thing we're going to have done is um, successfully figured out a way to school our child and keep our marriage healthy oh, in the middle of this, yeah. right? And the third- Oh, is that- <laughs> that. And then the third, which is really the mission of the like Van Pool as a whole, is we're going to have um, helped our team members here healthier and wealthier because we did it together. Yeah. And they will have the right mindset, tools, and physicality to do what they want to do in their life best life. And if we can do those three things, we're going to be feeling really good. And a fourth thing, um, we have bought an RV that we are remodeling right now. And so we're going to have this like really crazy retro RV that we have little fun adventures in. You know, that reminded me of a quote. Um, I, I just was listening to uh, when, I mean, really my favorite podcast um, is, oh no, it wasn't how I built this. It was another one. It was Eric Aries. Um, uh, ben sent me this one and uh, he interviewed Brian Chesky who mm. is the Airbnb um, mm -hmm. co-founder. Mm -hmm. And what Brian Chesky said, and it just happened to be right in front of me when you said that, is he said, love should be a word we use in business. The mm -hmm. feeling that someone else has a deep, big care for you. You see mm -hmm. people as vulnerable and people who need to be loved. And this is what reminded me. And this causes a deep primordial bond. Mm -hmm. I believe that when we go through really tough times together, we mm -hmm. bond uh, more, more intensely with our team Absolutely. around us, right? When we go through mm -hmm. these trying times. And so now what, what I'm hearing, you had the rug pulled under you really twice this year mm -hmm. and, and you took that and you became better. Mm -hmm. We owe it to mm -hmm. ourselves to become better. I yeah, mean, if we just roll over and- that. Yeah, but I mean, think about it. If you just roll over and take it when- crapola happens to you, mm -hmm. the crap won. Yeah, that's right. It won. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm rather competitive, even though I might have a sweet demeanor. I'm going to be nice to you, but I'm still <laughs> going to kick your buns, right? I'm still going to win. <laughs> I'm just going to do it with a smile and you're going to have no idea that I just lapped you. This right? is true. Because I don't need you. to put it in your face. I'm just going to win after I like yeah. crushed you. And, and you'll be, be super like, nice oh! and sweet. By the way, that was really fun beating you. Um, you know, we, we tease, right? Like when we were talking about our super strengths, right? Like our superpowers, one that you guys wrote for me was sweet and savage, which I think is probably fair. Oh, hey, you're um, cheating. You're going ahead. I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Well, that one is one that I had never heard before, but I think really resonates. So yeah. and there's another nickname we have for you that I won't share um, on, the, on this. <laughs> Um, what, what advice Seychelles, if anyone here is listening, you know, and, and they've got a business and, and the rug's been pulled out from under, under them, whether, whether it's with COVID, which I would argue all of us had the rug yeah. pulled, pulled out from yeah. under us, but you know, in other times, what, what You're advice gonna, it's going to happen. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think 
I think if it hasn't happened to you yet, despite COVID, we'll, we'll just put that in its own global bucket. Um, if it hasn't happened to you yet, it will. It will. Because if you're, if you're in the pursuit of in leadership or growth or development or entrepreneurship, it's not a matter of if you're going to hit major, major change and obstacles. It's, it's when, right? And so you need to figure out a coping mechanism and a skill set and start developing a muscle with that so that when it does occur, it's not so shocking and um, debilitating that you can't recover. Because I, I mean, I can tell you even, right, Parkinson's, which is a death sentence essentially, right, with my dad, like you can still find ways to win. You can. It's just a matter of mindset in action. And if you can do those two things, you can literally do anything. So that's what amazing. I, I love that. I love that. So you, you sort of cheated. <laughs> oh no. But I'm going to ask you anyway, Seychelles Van Poole, what are your superpowers? Well, definitely sweet and savage. Um, <laughs> I do, I do have a gift of saying um, the most blunt things in the nicest way possible. Um, I think you and I both could attest to that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I think having a naturally positive disposition um, at times can be a, uh, a detriment, but I would say 90% of the time um, it allows me to rebound quicker because I'm going to see the best in people. I'm going to see the best in a situation. And even in the darkest times, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for positive. Um, I, I think also too that I have a deep and profound love for people. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that, uh, is a real superpower when it comes to getting things to do with people, right. And being in a people business. Um, and I think if being fiercely loyal would probably be my fourth. I would agree with all of those that I think that's a good, a good, uh, a good self-assessment. Well, thank you. You know, I think that, I think that you're, you're living walking proof that, you know, you can kind of walk into a year thinking you're swan diving and, mm -hmm. and have a belly flop within days and, and come out of it and realize that the belly flop actually gave you the abs. Yeah, it did. <laughs> right? It actually, sucked him it in actually real made fast. it better, right? It sucked <laughs> him in real fast. Not always the way that we would choose to have these things happen, but, That's right. you know, I say it like it's a broken record. I say it so much, but truly substantial change is mm -hmm. always precipitated by a crisis, real or perceived. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you had some real external crises that I think you overcame beautifully. I think there's a lot of lessons uh, in that for everybody. So mm -hmm. thank you for being here today. Well, and I just, I so appreciate you, my friend. And, and I love that you are bringing uh, amazing voices out on this Friday session that you do, because it's so important for leaders to know you're not alone. And that That's we're right. all in this journey together and that we're all here to grow together. And I, I just, I love yeah. that you're doing this. So thank you. Thank I you. Really and, appreciate and that's it. actually um, part of the reason I do it. You know, uh, Ben, Ben Kinney and our, our whole organization has a term that we call leadership lonely. That's right. And, and part of what my goal in these is, is that exact reason is to show everybody that behind the curtain, everybody has trials and tribulations and everybody suffers. That's right. It's not all unicorns and rainbows. That's right. Yeah. But it's doable and it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. You're amazing. Thank you, my friend. You too. I love you. I'll catch you later. All right. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye everybody.